First, let's address the issue of social issues, uh, which Bloomberg is basically okay on. Uh, and yet, he is a creation of Wall Street uh, and an enemy of the Occupy movement. Um, uh, so, I, I think part of the problem is that uh, too many people within the liberal class or on the left focus too much of their energy into boutique activism, inclusiveness, um, diversity, all, all of which I support, of course, uh, but they forgot about the primacy of justice. And while they forgot about the primacy of justice, the corporate state was making war against the working class uh, and has destroyed the working class in this country. There's been a Weimarization of the American working class, and now we are seeing an assault on the middle class uh, as we reconfigure the country and the global economy into a form of neo-feudalism, a world that replicates the power structure of George Orwell's 1984, where you have uh, an inner party of 3 to 4 percent, an outer party of about 12 to 14 percent. Uh, these are corporate managers, public relations, and then the rest of us become proles, hanging on by our fingertips. Uh, and I think this is, for me, one of the great failures of the liberal class, and I wrote a book called Death of the Liberal Class, which is over 200 pages, looking at this. Um, and it coughed up, for me, these extremely repugnant figures like Bill Clinton, who spoke in that traditional feel-your-pain language of liberalism while assiduously carrying out the dictates of corporate power. Uh, it was under the Clinton administration that we saw welfare destroyed. And remember that 70% of the recipients uh, of welfare were children. It was under Clinton that we passed NAFTA, which was the greatest betrayal of the working class in this country since the 1948 Taft-Hartley Act, which makes it extremely difficult to organize. And, uh, and, and serious structural analysis of power and how it works is utterly absent uh, from the mainstream. And I feel it every time I just came back from France. I had a book published in France. And, you know, I, I get Le Monde. I'm on Radio France. I'm on, uh, you know, Entendeur. All, you know, I go to Canada. It's the CBC here. That kind of analysis which Saul makes, and the Canadians are more open to it, of course. Uh, Naomi Klein does it. Adbusters does it. Marshall McLuhan did it. Um, that's just utterly wiped out uh, from within the discussion. And, um, and I think that, that at this point, especially after Citizens United, which for me was the death knell of America, at that point it was over for me. Um, uh, I mean, American democracy was extremely anemic. Um, uh, but there's no way to compete. And the perfect sort of case study of this is Wisconsin, where um, they could have gone one of two ways. They could have gone towards a general strike. Sadly, they got pushed by the AFL-CIO and the Democratic Party back into a recall. Um, and we can't fight anymore on those grounds. They should have gone for the general strike. I'll just close by saying that all the correctives to American democracy came through movements that never achieved formal positions of power. Whether it was the Liberty Party that fought slavery, the suffragists that fought for women's rights, the labor movement, or the civil rights movement. And yet you could argue, at least until he was assassinated in April of 1968, that the most powerful political figure in the country was Martin Luther King, because when he went to Selma, 50,000 people went with him. And I think, for me, the problem of the left is that we forgot it's not our job to take power. Karl Popper, in The Open Society and Its Enemies, writes that the question, how do you get good people to rule, is the wrong question. Most people attracted to power, Popper says, are at best mediocre, which is Obama, or venal, which is Bush. <laughs> the, the, the question is, how do you get the people in power to be frightened of you? I lived in France. Sarkozy was a Cretan, but he was terrified of the unions <laughs> and the student unions. I mean, I told my son, who just graduated from Colgate, if you went to France and told French students that they had to pay $52,000 a year to go to college, they'd shut the damn country down. <laughs> there's, a wonderful, there's a wonderful scene in Kissinger's memoirs, do not buy the book, where it's 1971, you know, and, Kiss, and, and Nixon was the last liberal president we had. Not because he was a liberal, but because he was scared of movements. 
and he and Henry are standing by the window of the White House, and they've got thousands of anti-war demonstrators, and Nixon's terrified, and he's, he's surrounded the entire White House end to end with empty buses, and he looks out the window and he says, Henry, Henry, they're going to break through the barricades and get us. And that's just where we want people in power to be.